I'm Dr. Charles Berger, the medical director of the Pulmonary Hypertension Clinic at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. And we'll be discussing an upcoming article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in February 2011 entitled, Comparison of Body Habitus for Pulmonary Arterial Hypertension Patients Enrolled in the Registry to Evaluate Early and Long-Term PAH Disease Management the Reveal Registry, with normative values from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. The study is a comparison of pulmonary arterial hypertension, which is referred to as PAH, patients, and normal control subjects that were identified from the NHANES, which is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey to see if the body mass index was similar or different between these two groups of patients and control subjects. In addition, we looked at several subgroups within the population of the PAH group because many of the patients have associated comorbidities which were important to examine in this type of study. As a matter of background, the Reveal Registry is a 54-center U.S.-based observational registry of over 3,000 patients, which is the largest such registry for PA8 patients ever, and affords an opportunity for analysis with significant statistical power, such as the one that perform the basis for this study. Interestingly, when we looked at the body mass index as an average value, there was no difference between the patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension and the control subjects from NHANES. However, when we divided the patients and the control subjects according to whether or not they had a body mass index in excess of 30, i.e. obese, or whether they had a body mass index of 18 or less, i.e. underweight, there were significant differences that were uncovered in the subgroups of patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension. The most significant of which was that the idiopathic PAH group and the group in whom the pulmonary hypertension was felt to be due to exposure to drug and toxins most of which were dietary suppressants. That group had significantly elevated percentage of patients obese compared to the controls. Lastly, there were two groups of the pulmonary arterial hypertension patients that were underweight, and those were the ones who had pulmonary hypertension in association with either collagen vascular disease or human immunodeficiency, HIV disease. If the association between obesity and pulmonary arterial hypertension is confirmed, it raises a number of interesting clinical questions for practice. Idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension, by definition, has no known cause. So one such question would be, is obesity a risk factor for pulmonary arterial hypertension? Secondly, the findings of the study alert the clinicians to the significantly debilitated state that patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension in association with either collagen vascular disease or HIV so that they can concentrate perhaps on nutritional supplementation to assist them in managing their disease. If our findings are confirmed, then it would afford an opportunity to perhaps focus on either prevention or treatment of the obesity, which is perhaps an either an associated feature or a causal feature for pulmonary arterial hypertension. Since idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension has no known cause, then it gives an additional ounce of hope for those patients 
that perhaps some clinical intervention could lessen the impact of their disease. This is the first known published confirmed association between obesity and pulmonary arterial hypertension. One must be cautious, however, since this is a retrospective analysis in an observational study. I think it's going to be very important to prospectively investigate whether this association is true or it reflects what could be some confounding issue that can be problematic when you do retrospective research such as what's been done with this registry database. If, however, the association is confirmed, it really opens a wide range of potential investigative studies exploring the pathophysiologic mechanisms by which obesity may be associated with a disease such as pulmonary arterial hypertension. One such state is that of metabolic syndrome, which is associated with a number of comorbidities that are manifestations of obesity, such as diabetes, systemic high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia. It is known that patients with metabolic syndrome are at risk for vascular injury and vascular disease. So it isn't too much of a stretch to wonder whether or not patients with obesity and perhaps with metabolic syndrome may also be at risk for injury or disease of the pulmonary vasculature. It's those sorts of investigations and clinically and research relevant questions that will re require exploration. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.